Hello and welcome to 1 in 20 D&D. I am Gregory. This is the Farled and Reach Session 11 Recap. Now the funny thing about this is that I actually didn't play in Session 11. I am a player in this game. It is a 5e D&D game session we play every week. And I missed this one because I was out of town with my family and couldn't make it. So I listened to the live recording uh, i listened to the recording of the gameplay is what i mean to say and then i read our summary that is written up beautifully by amanda each week and then edited and filled in a little bit by the rest of us as well so we so each week we have this written summary and i've been doing these recaps but this one i'm kind of doing without having the benefit of being a part of the session so here we go the highlight of the session to me was right at the beginning we were the group was spending the night the last night on the road before getting to river run which is the town that we went to investigate the missing citizens that was also another group from the Vokter had gone to investigate and they went missing as well so we kind of had a dual purpose here find the missing unit and find out what's going on with the citizens so before arriving at the city the night before, Titus decided he would have a conversation with Alina. The preface to this is that our characters had earned enough experience to gain a level. So we were all going from level 6 to 7. Well, Charles decided he was going to have Titus dual class with Rogue. And the way he did it was by having this conversation with Alina. And it was brilliant. It went something like this. Kind of walked up to Alina, leaned up against a tree and said, you know, when back when I was in boot camp, basic training for the military, become or for the mercenary soldiering that I did, uh, my drill instructor ingrained in us this idea that a soldier that doesn't adapt is a dead soldier. And I... I really took it to heart back then, but I had kind of forgotten it. And I've just recently been reminded of this. It's, it's kind of come back to me because I've been watching you and the way you move in and out of combat and strike these lethal blows. It's it, as far as I'm concerned, you're the most eff effective member of this group. And this is Titus talking to Alina. So, he basically goes on to say he like plants a spear in the ground. He says this has become a liability. Yeah, I'm. I, I was used to fighting with you know a soldier on my left, soldier on my right, my shield in my hand, and my spear in my hand, and and I would protect the soldier on my left, and the soldier on my right would protect my flank, and so on down the line. But with our group, we move around a lot. Where I don't have someone on my flank. I don't always, you know. I I need I need to look out for myself, and I need to be more effective. So will you train me? Will you teach me how you do it? It it was awesome. I mean, there's a little more to it that that got even kind of got even better. And he basically had said, you know, you and your sister Marana have kind of reminded me that I need maybe or her have made me think that maybe I need to rethink how I deal with things meaning the drinking is you know if it's it's becoming a problem you guys have put it in my face he said Perdita and Jermaine my character have you know done their best to try to help but really you Alina and your sister have really been the ones that kind of like pushed through and and have stuck it out and, and been consistent with me and I think that's just what I needed. So he's so Alina says, okay, I don't know what you're talking about because lately I haven't been feeling all that effective because in this last fight we just did, I was stunned. I was I, I, useless and, and paralyzed essentially. You know. So she begrudgingly kind of agrees like she'll show him what she can and starts to teach him the ways of the rogue. Now... One of the last things that happens before she walks away, he, he basically says, he says, I, I'm going to be your, I'm your shield. He says, I'm going to look out for this group, but above all, I, I want you to know that you and your sister, your family, you come first. I, I am your shield. It was really awesome. Another really cool moment that happened in this interplay between the two characters Alina 
brought out her two glaze blades, these special, these magical daggers that she has, and said, you know, look, these are pretty incredible. And the longer you practice with them, the longer you use them, the more you get accustomed to them, the stronger they get. If something ever happens to me, I want you to take these and I want you to use these. And that was awesome. And similarly, one other thing that Titus mentioned to Alina is if I ever become, you know, if, if the drinking becomes a problem again, just leave me, you know, just take, you know, take me out or, or, or leave me behind. And Alina's like, we're not going to leave you behind. <laughs> we'll deal with it. We're, we, you know, we're a group. We're going to deal with it. So it was really excellent moment between these two characters. Delicious. Uh, Marana kind of saw the interplay, but didn't hear it. I assume that maybe some of the others of the group might have caught it. But it will, again, I wasn't there, so I didn't have, I didn't partake in it, and it wasn't. I don't think it was really important at that moment, but it was really beautifully played out, and it impressed everyone. In fact, it impressed our DM so much that he gave Titus inspiration for the game for that moment, which was cool. It was a good character development moment. And it was one of the coolest level up moments that he had ever witnessed. It's one of the coolest moments. It probably is the coolest moment I've ever seen for leveling up. So. Kudos, Charles. That was brilliant. The rest of the session was pretty, uh, I want to say, straightforward in that the group got to the city, the town, whatever we want to call it. No signs of life. They search around. They find uh, they find a body in one of the buildings, kind of barricaded in one of the buildings. Perdita actually found it, and uh, Titus was with her. It turns out that this is one of the this was the rogue Cyprian from the first Voktair unit that came to investigate. He was all cut up and and died in this room, but it was determined a short time later because Lily came up to help them look at this body and kind of investigate. She figured out that he didn't actually die from like blood loss. It seems like he died from starvation or dehydration or both, but probably dehydration. Which is weird. So he had carved a note into the desk or had left a note on the desk or something like that. But it was all in thieves camp. So he showed it to Alina, Alina Titus because he, he, he kind of recognized it because she had started teaching him some of it. But obviously he doesn't know it yet. So he brought it to Alina. She's, she picked out five words. Which they were danger, children, death, temple, and escape. So he scrawled this message, this message out in Thieves' Cant and left, and it was like on the table that he had been laying against or something, or laying next to bedside table or something. Meanwhile, Marana is scouting around a little bit. She sees a group of humanoids off in the distance. She kind of whistles to the group and fires an arrow at it. It turns out to be a mob of zombies. Titus sees this. He's like, "There's way too many of them. Let's get back in the house. Let's go. Let's go." He gets in the house. Perdita, she gets in the house. Marana begrudgingly gets in the house. Alina and Lily are kind of the last two. They practically have to drag them in the house. Lily is using her clerical abilities to kind of turn the undead and blast them with fire and whatever. And they finally, Perdita just like picks Lily up and carries her in the house, which was kind of funny. Marana got pretty pissed off, basically telling everybody like, when we call a retreat, we retreat. And, and she was pissed because n nobody listened. And when Titus said, hey, it's time to retreat, it's time to get back into cover, like she was the first one and only one, and her and Perdita, really. And Lily and, and Alina, of course, again, were both like doing their own thing. So that was kind of another short, cool moment. They deal with the zombies. They get inside the house. They basically barricade themselves inside the house, but then they pick off the zombies because there's enough of them, and, and over time they manage to deal with it. Lily and, or sorry, Perdita and Titus kind of get this creepy feeling that like they're being watched. Well, that doesn't really lead them to anything. They start searching around. Perdita puts an alarm on the back door. Alina kind of scouts around outside. Titus goes up on the roof to see if they can find a way to this temple and see if it's clear. Don't see any forms of or signs of movement or life or anything, so they decide they're going to go check out the temple. Alina and Titus sneak in. They kind of again the temple is abandoned. They do find this marble box. Alina is like nervous about opening it. 
She goes and checks out these two side rooms, finds that one has a stairway leading down. Titus is with her, practicing his new skills. Luckily, he picked up that great armor recently, the uh, adamantane armor, so he's got no disadvantage on his stealth, which is kind of cool. And so he's... I think it's adamantine. Anyway, he has some sweet armor that allows him to avoid stealth having yeah trouble with being sneaky that helped he decided he would check out the ch this chest or box or whatever it was and lo and behold he finds inside of it a shield and some other items he goes to Jermaine and says hey can you take a look at this stuff Jermaine kind of determines that yes in fact they are some of these items are magic in including the shield Titus kind of plays around and, and familiarizes himself with the shield and is like "Ooh, this is an upgrade he hands his, he had a plus one shield. He handed that to Perdita, so she got a little bit of an upgrade. Then they decide they're gonna the group is gonna go down these stairs. They go downstairs, they see two more of these zombies, and these two zombies actually look like two more members of the unit, the special unit from Vokter. They're zombies, so they, they kind of decide, they're like, what should we do? Can we help them? Lily's basically like, they're pretty much beyond hope. And so they decide, well, let's just take them down. Titus, when, so Marana's like, well, do we want to make a distraction? And Titus just hauls off and taking a lesson from Alina in another way, basically decides he's going to do his own thing and throws his shield. Now, this shield is really cool. It zooms through the air. He, like, chops the head off one of the zombies, and the thing, like, ricochets back and comes right back to his back without almost seeming like anything happened. So he got Captain America's shield, which is freaking cool, and he loves it. And that pissed Marana off, and she kind of looked at Alina like, this is your fault. <laughs> so they decide they're going to engage these zombies. There's two more farther to the south that they notice. The other, the last two members of the Vokter unit. So we found all four, or excuse me, all five of this elite unit group and what happened to them. Sadly, they're all either deceased or undead. While they're trying to deal with that, a giant d zombie... I comes floating with tentacle eye tentacle stalks, which we players know as a death tyrant, comes floating up out of the ground. There's like these holes in the floor. It comes floating up out of there. So then they have to deal with this death tyrant, which is a crazy fight. Titus pulls out this cylinder that he had gotten way back when in it back in uh, that would have been uh not Vilson but uh Orison. Way back in Orison, when we rolled that dude who tried to give us bad information, <laughs> that was one of the items he picked up in his shop, and it turns out to be like this green napalm bomb. So he chucks this at the at the beholder, the death tyrant, to do the, to make the finishing blow. It was crazy. Got the killing blow and just figured it like threw it right into the eye and boom. So they dealt with that. They got. A little lucky because that obviously could have been horrible, gone horribly, horribly wrong. But the group did again pulled through in amazing feats, as we seem to be doing on a regular basis. They searched around, found a few more trinkets and some items, some potions and scrolls, that kind of thing. Kept, searched through the cave system a little more. They found the all these bodies that were now dead they were probably zombified as well by this death tyrant because it seemed like the whole the, all the evidence was that the whole city had basically been turned into zombies but they were all dead now like they had no they, they no longer had any anything willing it to be so once the death tyrant died apparently they died and then they find this there's a, a well in the town right well they find that there's like the well kind of comes down and passes through this chamber and there's this, they hear this voice, and it sounds like a child, like, help, help me, hello, help, are you there? That kind of, making these kind of noises. So it's some weird mimic monster, not, not a mimic in the sense of, like, a mimic, but it's some monster that, like, mimics the voice of a child somehow. We don't even really know. They just, like, wiped that out right away and basically determined that they had kind of cleared out this cave system and dealt with the threat. So they go back up to the surface 
they're going to deal with Perdita especially really wanted to like give Cyprian some kind of like last rites or something like that. They found the emblems of the Vokter on each of the on each of the members, the like a little medallion or whatever, and it was decided kind of on the fly in the session that each of the ve- medallions actually has the the name of the person on the medallion. So, we collected all the medallions to bring back for everyone. When they get outside, uh, up on one of the buildings, they see two figures. It's a man and a woman. The woman has like this flowing blonde hair. It's kind of like blowing in the breeze or something. The man's cloaked. They're both in leathers. He's got his, you know, all but his eyes covered. And he basically says something to the effect of, oh, I can actually give you the whole quote here, I think. Let me see if I have the whole quote. That would be fun. Yeah. Uh, he says Tatiana don't waste your time these ones are of no consequence they just like the rest of their group will be dealt with through will be dealt with soon enough let's go he has things for us to do and then they like turn around she she had knocked an arrow she's like ready to draw and that's that's when he says it she she like puts the arrow down turns around like walks through this like gate in real like space just like the demons we had been fighting had doing and then a moment later he turns around does the same thing so everybody's like what the heck was that and then a few moments later titus has the realization that that's his sister (laughs) and he says to the group he says he hopes everyone enjoyed meeting his sister what so bomb dropped on the group. Okay, your sister is a villain and you have a sister and okay. So he's freaked out. He decides he can't handle this at the moment and ha- and breaks down. And he had been doing really really good up to this point. He he had been like resisting the drink, resisting the drink, c- consciously, intentionally resisting the drink and that snapped him. He's like he pretended he was going to go search the rest of the city for any other maybe survivors, but he sneaks off to try to find a bar or something. Alina kind of has an idea what he's doing and follows him. Uh, and basically Lily and Perdita decide they're just going to deal with the bodies. Now, the last thing that happens, Perdita kind of has had this locket that she was given that has apparently a picture of her on the inside of it. This was a few sessions ago. She found this. Well, she's been kind of like in her moments of, I guess, quiet, kind of like fiddling with the locket. And she's fiddling with the locket and her finger catches on the picture and it has like a false back. Like the picture pops out or something. And she sees an, she sees writing, elven writing inside the locket. And it it says in, in elvish what we assume now to be her name. It says evening fall in elvish. And that's how the session ended. So, phew. I mean, so there were three really critical character moments in this session. Titus and Alina, Titus's sister, and Perdita possibly learning her name. So, super cool session. I'm, I'm bummed that I missed it. I'm also glad that it was recorded so I could... Check it out and catch up for next time. I can't wait. We're skipping this week because of Easter Sunday. Coming back next week. I cannot wait for session 12. I'm very much excited. It's going to be a good one. So in the meantime, hey, thanks for stopping by. I, I, this was a short one and kind of just my little bit of reaction really to what happened. Thanks for stopping in. Thanks for the support. Thanks for the likes and all that. I'll see you at the next one, and in the meantime, keep rolling 20s.